All right, so I've got color holds, but maybe I don't want the color holds to be fully normal and everywhere, even though that could look really good on black, right? It might not look as good on the other colors. You see how it looks kind of dim? So one thing you can do with the color holds, which I think is a good idea, is to try different blending modes. Instead of just taking their opacity down, which just kind of weakens them, leaves everything blurry, I like to use pin light or soft light. And then you can see how they affect the outline subtly. Okay. Now, you want to organize your layers a little bit. and organize this stuff you've done. And for one thing, on my white highlights, I can see that I have something going outside of the edge. So I'm going to, to use my extra layer here that has it all sealed up. I'm gonna select the outside shape. Use that selection to delete from my white highlight layers just to clean up the outside edge so I have full control of it. Oh, that did too much. Let's see. Oh, because I didn't have contiguous check. There we go. So now I can use that selection to erase from my white highlights, and it will clean up the outside edge altogether. I like how it looks, but there might be little colors I want to adjust and play with. And so my flat colors aren't really making up any of it anymore. It's all within these backgrounds. So I kind of like this one, the Duotone Shadows copy on this soft layer. I think I want to erase away from the edges of that. This is what's so great about layers and having all these different variations. I'll use a soft edge brush. I'm erasing a 40% opacity, just away from the edges. Deepen it a little bit. Maybe deepen it a little bit in here. I can also use dodge and burn to do that. I like all the purples here. Let's bring some of those through. So it's not too lava lamp-like, but but a little funkier. And this one, let's see, maybe tone that down a bit in some areas or not. Maybe uh, burn it in some areas. I'll bring it out. Okay, so now let's organize. Let's see what we're actually doing. So I have my color holds at the very top. I no longer need anything else at the very top. They'll go above my black line work. I've got my black line work underneath the color holds, so I'll turn them off one by one. Color holds off, black line work off. I've got my full bleed inking, but it's colored now, <laughs> you know, the kind of extra shadows. I have my white highlights soft and my white highlights sharp. I've got, so let me turn those off. I don't need this one anymore. I've got one copy of Soft Edge Duotone that I layered on top of another copy of my Soft Edge Duotone. Right. I've got my Cut Edge color. Then I've got my flat colors, which I altered a bit. I only need one. So you delete these. I've got a black background, I have a gray background, I have a white background. All right, so this is how I want you to kind of organize your layers, just so you can really see. I want you to have your black ink outline. I want you to leave it as a smart layer. This will help you later when we do our poster. Keep it as a smart layer, keep it locked, but you can decide that you want a stroke turned on or not as an offset. I'm going to show you another way you can do that. Any color holds you might have, keep above your black line layer. Right? You can see how the stroke could really affect it. 
Any full bleed inking you have, keep that on a separate layer. Any white highlights you have, keep that on a separate layer. I'm going to combine these two just to make it a little bit easier. Command E. Then you want to have your duotone all in one layer or one group. Right. Then you want to have your cut edge all in one group. And then you have your flat color. So digital coloring is like a sandwich. You have your white bread at the bottom, right? And that stays blank. You have your color in the middle, starting with flat color. That's like your peanut butter. And then you add other things on top of that, your jelly, your pickles, your olives, whatever. And then on top of everything goes your black your black bread. So it's a sandwich with black bread at the top, white bread at the bottom. And then you might do a toothpick with an olive on top. That's your color hold, your special effects, but that's optional. And that's how we organize everything. Then I want you to turn off your background and you're going to save it as a PNG. First, save it as a PSD for yourself. Now, what's the only problem with saving it as a PNG in this form is that you might want to have a stroke turned on so that there's an offset. So if it prints on a colored t-shirt or prints on a, a dark background, you can still see the line work. Right. And there's one other thing I'll show you that can help with that. What I can do once I've turned off the background is I can go to the very top layer, hold down option, say layer, merge visible while I'm holding down option. That merges everything on top. Shouldn't change the color too much, but mine did a little bit. And then what you can do is change that to a color overlay that's a solid color. I'm going to use white at 100%. And you can add a stroke to just to that. So that's this is if you were using anything that um, required different opacities. But now I'll move that layer behind my flat color layer. And that gives me a layer where I can control the effects and the color behind and have full opacity no matter what layer I'm on. All right. So now I'm ready to submit it. I can decide how much of a stroke I want on the outside to help set it off. I could even try, you know, to make it glow instead of just cut out. But I kind of like the sticker, sticker idea. So maybe I'll make it pretty thick. I don't know. I'm indecisive. No, I'll keep it pretty. Actually, let's leave it as an option for later. All right, so to turn it in, you save it in this manner so you understand all the layers going into it in the right order. You're going to save it as a PNG. And then you're going to save a JPEG of just your black line work. So first, save as. Come 
of PNG to the desktop. Carl assignment seven spot illustration. Then I want to turn off everything except for the black line work. Put it on a white background. Or if you have a stroke built in, you can just leave it like this. Save that with a different name. Spot illustration line work as a PNG or as a JPEG if you don't mind having a, a solid white rectangle to the desktop. So I can see your vector line work and then the coloring behind it. All those different stages. And then you can save and close your PSD. You can see the color holds used on this illustration in the outline. So this is kind of the finished. Doesn't have the texture from the dissolve. But we'll talk more about kind of the texturing of it later. And so we have two images here that we'll upload. And then the, the third image we need is just your sketch. So the black vector line work, the coloring, looks pretty good, and then your sketch. Your, and they should always go in chronological order. Your sketch first, your vector line work, and then your coloring. Let me see where my sketch is. Actually, I already have my sketch up, I believe. There it is. All right, and that shows the creation of a spot illustration. Just because my sketch is kind of cut out as a PNG, I'm going to re-export it as a JPEG. So that it fills in that, that white space. It looks a little cleaner. All right. Now the special effect, I've got uh, two minutes left in this demo. The special effect you can do that we're going to talk about to add more texture to it is separating the colors you've made into CMYK dots, cyan, magenta, yellow, and black printing dots. So let's get rid of all these, all these references. You can kind of see the printing artifacts here in the printing dots because it's a silk screen that was scanned. But here you see how everything's really clean, except for where I had the dissolve filter. But what if I wanted to give a little bit more of that kind of printing 80s sticker texture to it all? Well, I'm going to take that layer I made that merged everything together. I'm going to duplicate it, turn off the effects on it, move it to the very top. Right? And then I'm going to go to Actions, Window Actions. And I've created a folder of actions for you. These are uh, sub-programs within Photoshop, macros that I've written. And I'll walk you through them a little bit later when we're learning more about CMYK. But if you just want to play with it, use the one that says CMYK Full Run. It's like choosing a video, a VHS cassette off the, off the shelf. You don't want to open up the VHS cassette and play with all the programming inside or you'll mess it up. Right? Instead, you just want to select it off the shelf the folder is the shelf, and then you hit play. And then just hit return. It's going to do a lot of funky stuff to your file, but it will not overwrite your file. It will open up new files where it merges all your different layers together in order to do stuff. But make sure you have your background layers turned off, right? 